During the year 1974, photographer-journalist Betty Medzger crossed the United States of America photographing women at work, recording the wide range of skills and professions that women in the United States now have. Today, three of these women are with Ms. Medzger to discuss their work and consider how it has affected their lives. Sharon Pra is a school librarian by profession. She worked in this capacity at an elementary school in Washington, D.C. until recently when she and her husband and their two daughters moved to St. Louis, Missouri. Ms. Pra expects to resume her career there. Patricia Franzen was a high school science teacher for several years while studying for a master's degree. Now, Ms. Franzen has a very different job as a production foreman at a steel plant in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. While working at the Jones and Laughlin Steel Corporation, she is continuing her studies toward a Ph.D. degree. Joan Wilson works for the General Motors Automobile Assembly Plant in Baltimore, Maryland, as a welder on the assembly line. Before beginning with General Motors three years ago, Miss Wilson worked as a hospital attendant at various hospitals and nursing homes. Betty Medzger is currently a freelance photographer journalist whose first book entitled Women at Work was recently published. Like women everywhere, American women have always worked. Much of their work has been in the home. When we use the word work today in our discussion, we'll be referring primarily to work done outside of the home, work that's done for economic gain. During World War II, many American women did work outside the home. That was because there was a shortage of men and they went to work in the factories and offices and jobs that men had held before the war. After the war was over, most of these women went back to their work at home. We are still working to change that stereotype of what the working woman is. And today there's a new attitude among American women and among American men. Child care, taking, taking care of children generally, whether it's inside or outside of the home, many men are interested in doing that, and many women are quite happy to find that out. In other words, all phases of work we're trying to uh, see that both men and women can work inside the home as well as outside the home, whether it's in the traditional jobs we've done or in new jobs. The three of you are all workers, and you're all working mothers. I'd like to hear what your problems are or what your joys are as far as what it means to be a mother who also works. How does it affect the relationship that you have with your children, and also what are your problems with child care? Patty, would you like to tell us what your thoughts are? Well, since my children are babies, really, I've had to work as well as go to school, and I found that it increased the quality of time I spent with them, because the time I spent with my kids, were it was genuine time. And also, it's made them more rounded instead of indulging children as we have a tendency to do. They have to help. My son does his share of the housework, vacuuming, drying dishes when it's his turn, as well as burning the garbage, waxing furniture. And my daughter does her share of the responsibility, and, which includes helping me with the car. So as far as the children, I think my children are better children because I did work than if I wouldn't, because I would have had the tendency to overindulge them. What about difficulties with finding child care? Did you have any problems with that? I am very fortunate there because my mother would take care of the kids while I was at work or while I was at school. And when I got my master's in geology, I had terrific teachers, professors, that would let me take the kids on geology field trips, whether it was oceanography or in the actual mountains or wherever. So once again, my children weren't left out, and they profited from this. And as a school teacher, they found no, no great thing for me being a teacher. But yet, once I was a laborer in a mill, I mean, just a laborer pushing a shovel, this was last summer, they were happy. My son thought it was great to see mommy come home dirty, and what'd you do today? <laughs> <laughs> and I would go on the, a tour of the mill on my own time. And I remember the day I brought him home a piece of Coke, which is still in our bookcase. Where'd that come from? So I explained what the ovens looked like, and I explained furnaces, and it was better than a lot of bedtime stories I read from Mother Goose, <laughs> telling them, boy, what Mommy saw today, it was big, and it was really bright, and it was hot. And 
I think my children have really benefited more from me working. They've had more exposure to so many different facets of life than if I would have been a stereotyped mother that we so often think of where I would just stay home and do my cleaning and cooking. I still bake a lot, they help, and I still can do home canning. Being a working mother has not stopped me from being, I feel, a good mother and still a female at the same time. Sherry, you and your husband both work. Yeah. Uh, what's this been like for your children? Well, um, our kids are very flexible. They're very independent. They, um, they en enjoy us and they enjoy our jobs, both at home and, and away from, from home. We've taken both of them you know, to our various jobs and they get to come with me to the library and they go with Daddy to school. And um, they've always been a very, very, they've always played a really you know, active part in, in our uh, careers. I, th I think that child care is, um, is a real problem especially if you're in my situation where I'm, I'm away from home several hundred miles and I have no relatives like you, you know, to take up the slack. And so child care can, can be a real stumbling block. Um, I remember when I applied for my job with uh, the public schools and I went down one day and I had my interview and they said, can you start tomorrow? And I said, <laughs> yeah. Can I bring my I, children? You know, I'd love to start, but I don't know what Jennifer and Heidi are going to do. Well, you know, I managed to find a very um, loving person who was able to take care of my little one. She was a year and a half, and um, that worked out well. And we've always, my husband and I have always shared the child care responsibilities, even when we were both in school. We sat for one another. and. Uh, I don't think the kids have ever felt like, you know, I don't think they've had any problems identifying us as their parents and the loving people who care for them, you know, at all times. But um, it's, it's been a, you know, it's a struggle sometimes to find loving care for your children. And I think, that, I don't think you can go out to work not, not knowing, you know, whether your child is being cared for properly. It's definitely a a thought in your mind at all times. But once you, once you do have that care, and once you do know that your child is secure and in a you know, safe, loving environment, then it's the greatest thing in the world, you know, just to be able to release them to that care. What about you, Joan? Well, since my kids are teenagers, I have no problem with uh, babysitting. But uh, it's a good feeling when you go to work and knowing that uh, your child is being taken care of because before they became teenagers I was a working mother when they were very little and uh, I had problems with girls who would come in and bring friends with them and then you had to worry about that and then worry about your child being taken care of also. No daycare facilities. No I daycare think. facilities. I guess that would be true for all three of you well, that you've never had daycare. It's no. been a matter of a family. Fun. My mother or my grandmother would take care you know but um, no daycare facilities for them. Well, we've, we've been lucky in the daycare. Um, my little girl Heidi has been going to daycare since she was two and a half at, at a great center. Just marvelous with lots of um, helpful adults, loving adults, <laughs> and uh, you know, just great care. But that's, I think, an exceptional center, but I think it's what, what they all should be like if you're going to have a daycare center. It should be staffed by, you know, loving people who really want to watch a child develop and grow and, and learn. And I have the feeling if there were four uh, men workers sitting here and we were talking about how do you feel about work and so on, <laughs> but this question would never come up. Oh, and yet I think that some of you have had experience with some of your co-workers uh, some of your male co-workers having the same problem. Uh, could you describe uh, whether or not that is true and what they do about it? Well, in the mill, I've encountered, and this was the first that I encountered it, I encountered quite a few men that it's a question, I mean, whether you're on a crane or you're walking somewhere around the mill, you'll start talking some about your life. And they will say that they have one, maybe three children, their wife passed away, they're divorced, and they start saying some of the problems they have. 
and they do have to arrange for their babysitter. And it's really neat to hear a guy say, yeah, I made a chicken casserole we had last night. <laughs> Kids didn't like it. <laughs> or one, one of the guys that works more or less under me is uh, he raised two daughters from the time that the one was only four years old. And it was really kind of nice and I, human sounds strange, but to hear some of the warm things that the girls have said when they were growing up, and it almost brings the child, I think, the daughters closer to their fathers. And, well, this is what I found with my son, as I tend to do a lot of things with both of my children that it's a bisexual thing that men and women do it, whether it's sports or whatever. You know, it's something to hear a guy say, I was trying to teach her how to sew, and she couldn't <laughs> follow the pattern. <laughs> I find it quite common. Do you think that, that your male colleagues, in the case of, of the two of you, where you're in what are considered non-traditional jobs for women, that working with a woman also makes a difference in how they regard what their children's choices are going to be? Uh, the reason I say that, I'm reminded of a of a jet pilot, a woman I met, and she described how some of the pilots, after they came to accept her, told her that when their daughters saw the stories about the, the woman pilot, they said, Daddy, I want to be a pilot just like you, which was sort of a shock at first, because that's what they wanted their little boys to say. But it was such a surprise that their daughters would say it, and they felt kind of pleased about it. Do you think that that happens very much? Does working with a woman help a man in his own attitudes toward his daughters? I think it does. I um, do too. Several people that are very good friends of mine now, and these are men that, well, one is 58 years old, and he was said that women belong in a home and women are mothers and daughters, and that they don't come into the mill, and now we're great friends. He tells a lot of his friends about me. Hmm. You know, boy, you should have seen Patty the other day, what she did. or. It's almost as if several, so many of the men I found, it's as if they are proud of me and that mm. I made it. I hung in and I made it. And so they're all for me and I'll do whatever they tell me to do. And a lot of guys are saying this, that, you know, this isn't a bad place. I told my daughter, you know, there's a lot of money in the mill and <laughs> Patty, she really likes yeah, it. Right. And okay. turning it around, I'll ask my son, I'll say, uh, what are you going to be when you grow up? You're going to be a still worker like mommy? <laughs> You're going to be a school teacher? So it's nice to put the shoe on the other foot for yeah. a change. Very good. Yeah. Go I, th I just think the great, the great thing is opening up avenues and possibilities. That, Choices that, for everyone. That, yeah. that maybe weren't there before. And that, I think that's great. Everybody should have a choice. And mm -hmm. uh, you know, whatever, whatever they want it to be. Were you going to say something? I have seven younger sisters. And one had always talked about being a lawyer. And, well, we always said, all right, you'll be a lawyer. And since I've been in the mill, and it's been over a year, it's been a year and a quarter, I guess, uh, Lori is really set. She's entering the university in September, and she's going for her law degree. And the girl knows she's going to make it because I didn't have any trouble. And several of the other, the younger girls are starting to talk what they want to be. And it gives people that I know a new confidence or a new dimension, as you said, that you don't have to be just a certain set traditional role. You can cross the barriers. What about your need for working? Often the, the people who don't want to see women go outside the home to work will bring up the argument, well, a woman doesn't need to do it. You know, it's a second salary in the family, or she just, she doesn't need to, she's just on a lark. How do you react to that? Do you need to work? Uh, yeah, yeah, I need to work. <laughs> <laughs> Why do you need to I work? I need to work, well, because for one thing, my husband and I separated, and I have four children. Are you the sole support of the children? Yes. And I do That's a pretty have, strong need. <laughs> and I do have to work, yes. And, uh, but the kids give me a lot of help. They cook, uh, they wash clothes, they iron, they clean, and I do my share. When they were coming up, like, uh, I used to play football, baseball, ride bikes, skate even, fall down and, you know, get up. But um, th that was the part that I had to play because my husband was there when they needed him. And it was a thing like they would say, gee, Ma, we never have anybody to play with us, or why, you know, 
can't you go with us? And I would go out with them. Uh, I had to be a mother and a father. And so I do have the need to work. And you felt the, the need, not just economically, you, but also in an right, emotional, emotional way. Emotionally, right. I had to, you know, get out there with them. Sherry, do you need to work? Yeah. <laughs> I, I tried um, staying at home for a while. And, well, my marriage is sort of um, broken down on sort of non-traditional lines. There are some things that I'm just not very good at, and most of them happen to be the traditional <laughs> women's work. How'd you get um, to be that way? I, I really don't know. I was, I was brought up um, as an only child, and I think, I think you're a more... I think you're a more aware person of various um, roles. If you're the only person, you're the only child there to fulfill that, these various roles. You know, I was always playing baseball or whatever, and I just wasn't ever interested in, um, you know, the cooking and the sewing. Although I do those things well, that's okay. But I, the cleaning and, you know, ooh, I, I don't care who you are. I think that's a bad job. <laughs> So how do you deal with that so, in your well, house? Well, in our house, um, Harry does the laundry, I do the cooking, he washes the dishes, I do all the financial stuff, I write all the checks and do all the bills and do the income tax at the end of the year. Um, we have a partnership going on. It's a very loving, supportive partnership between the two of us, and I guess I'm very lucky in that. Um, because he doesn't have any qualms about being the only person in the neighborhood that he knows of who irons their own shirts whenever <laughs> they need one. It, it doesn't bother him. And of course it doesn't bother me because I'm lousy at it. <laughs> I guess he started ironing his shirts when he came home one afternoon. He said, what did you do all afternoon? And I said, I tried to iron one of your shirts. <laughs> and it had taken me about an hour and a half and I decided that I was just not cut out for that. And he was, he can do it in five minutes, so why should I do it? I mean, just because my mother always did it, that's, that's not a very good reason. If you're not good at it and you don't enjoy it, then, you know. Did you come to this around. kind of understanding about each other very early, or did you have to go through some struggles? Well, there are, I think there are always some struggles, but, but we've always both worked. And at the very beginning, we both worked and we both went to school, and we both took care of Jennifer, and we both did all the household things and so I think early early in our marriage we were forced to be I think a little bit more flexible than the you know the typical couple that kind of falls into this pattern where the the man has a job and goes out and he does that and the woman stays home we haven't ever really had that for very long and I found that when we did for the very short period when we did have that I just didn't like it at all because I you know, I was tending to catch all the junk work, <laughs> and I didn't enjoy that. So I, and I, I enjoy my career. My career is important to me. I like to get out. I like to be with people. I like to work with kids. That's what I do. Beyond the financial reasons oh, yeah. for it. Oh. Let's find out a little bit about what it's like to go from a traditional job into a non-traditional job. And the two of you are certainly good examples of this. Patty, you were a high school science teacher yes. and now you're a foreman in a steel plant. How did that come about? Of financial needs. I have been for the past seven and a half years sole support of my two children. And while in college I take it well, too. Well yes I finished my undergraduate work and worked part-time jobs selling more or less worms and in a fishing <laughs> stand and I used to be an assistant librarian and part-time <laughs> secretary and trying to make ends meet to support the kids. And yet, I don't know if I have a lot of energy or what, but I like being around people and I like doing things and the world's an exciting place, there's so much. But it was financial. It came to the point where I wanted to finish my master's and tuition is high. So I went to work as a laborer in a steel mill. And the teachers at school says, oh, turned out in the end I did make more money than even the guys did, but I was a laborer, bottom of the gang, two points. Which as a is laborer in the steel plant, you were making more money than as a teacher. Well, it, as a four-year school teacher in Pennsylvania, <laughs> yes, I was making as much money with better benefits, and I was happy. And this was being a laborer. I'd push a broom, I'd push a shovel, I had my barrels of steel things. The guys used to watch me lift them from the floor 
swing it up one level of tables and up another one and kind of hug it and kind of waddle down the steps with it and empty it. But I did it. And I guess in a way I got respect of it because one guy is standing here and he says, I really feel bad letting you do that, Patty. He said, but it's your job. <laughs> and I says, well, fine. I says, and I'm just a person doing it. And as a laborer, I would tour the mill in my own time. And I found it alive and exciting and so much related with my geology and physics that I've had. They approached me, do you want to be a foreman? And I, I had a great time in the mill, learned so much. The men in the mill accepted me. I would go to a machinist and kind of hang on my shovel and say, what are you doing? And he would stop and explain it to me, go through the blueprints, the mathematics of it. The metallurgists, they would stop. And as I went through a tour of the mill, they would all explain. And I thought, these people are super people. The men don't mind me being here. I accepted the job. I've been in the mill, as I said, well over a year. And I felt no resentment. And as long as I'm willing to do my thing, I have no problem. I can ask questions, and they treat it with respect. They don't treat it like it's kind of a dumb question. I have no regrets. I felt no trouble being accepted. And I just put on my steel-toed boots and my work shirt and tuck my hair up and except for the mascara and the earrings, I'm one of the guys. <laughs> well, John, you were working as a nurse's aide. I went from a nurse's aide um, to, uh, from nursing home to hospital to General Motors. <laughs> okay, and in the one the place welder. you were making $54? $54 a week. And to $214 a, a week, week when you started right. working as a welder. Right. I guess that says something about what we pay nurses' aides, yeah. too. <laughs> Believe it. <laughs> How but did you feel about, about, well, why did you make the change would be a more well, important question. I needed more money. And um, General Motors benefits were good. The money was good. And, and I felt good being around all those people because I tell you what, the first day I went there, I was scared to death. All these people, cars, you just didn't know what to do, you know. Or you mean because it was so totally different from any from atmosphere? Any, you had been in the environment that I was used to being around. And um, it worked out fine. The men, they gave me the largest gun and knives. Here, use it. They taught me. I went through five men in You're seven talking days. about the welding. The welding, welding, welding <laughs> this one the welding <laughs> gun. Sorry. Welding <laughs> gun. I went through five men. Well, it's like on a job training. They train you. You know, different men in the plant will train you. They allow you three days to learn the job. I went through five men and seven days. I've, I had to relieve tension. So I went in the bathroom, cried it out, came back, and I've had the job ever since. But uh, the benefits are real good, and the money is very good especially when you know you're getting it every week and then you can pay off all your bills and start from you know from the beginning and work on over because like when I left my husband um, there was a lot of bills that he had made and I had to pick up the slack so it kept me in a hole quite a bit but then when I went to General Motors it's all smooth and out now moved into a new apartment I have the kids with me, and it's working out nice. What about the energy involved in the, in the work? Do you find yourself uh, wondering, why am I doing such difficult work? No, not, not at all. Not at all, because um, when I first went there, I thought I wouldn't be able to do it. Now I think I know seven or eight jobs in there, more than some of the women, you know, in the body shop. Mm -hmm. And uh, I... I haven't gotten bored with it, um, not, not at all. Do you think that uh, part of that comes from the fact that, it, that it's new to you? Yeah, it's, it's new, but not that new now since I've been yeah. there well over a year. The two of you must have to think every once in a while about the fact that you're doing something that a, not only your, your mothers wouldn't have considered doing, probably, but that just ten years ago, a woman might not have considered doing, unless there was a war and the men were out of the factories. Right. Why do you think you were able to step into something that now seems so very natural to you? Well, with, <laughs> first of all, my mother was all for me. 
She says, yes, you don't need to be a teacher. She says, you're happier now than you ever have. Now, she stayed home and had 11 children. Had 11 right? children, yes, <laughs> and she thought it was just great. And she likes some of the stories that I tell about the guys at the mill and things that they've said to me. Um, one thing that I have been told why I was accepted, and I consider it a great compliment, we, I've been on the Coke ovens for the past several months, and as I sat there with the t-shirt on and my gray work shirt and all, we're all sitting on the floor and it's dirty and I kind of had a glow about me, coal dust. <laughs> we're all sitting there and it was, this was the day that I got to go into an oven. They had a heat shield in, but thinking of it, it's exciting and one thing with the energy, I find it grows. You have so much to feed upon and it's not the novelty, it's because it's so real and it's a tangible thing, something you can really grasp. But I was more or less proud of myself. I was in there, it was 2,200 degrees, and the guys <laughs> left me, and the riggers kind of moved over, and I slid in. And I was sitting on the floor cross-legged, reading lunch. And somehow we got on the subject. They said, hey, you look like one of us now. And I said, I've been telling you I'm one of the guys. And they said, you're right, you are. They said, you know, the guys have really accepted you. They, they respect you. You're not afraid to climb. You're not afraid to get dirty. You're not afraid to ask questions if you don't know something, and you're not afraid to say, I don't know it, or I'll try to do it. And they said, so you are respected, but they still know that underneath, that when you go home, you're definitely a female. <laughs> it was an overall beautiful compliment. Yes. Mm -hmm. Is that the same experience yes. pretty much that, mm -hmm. that, that you've had? Especially when, when I first started, you know, the men used to encourage you a lot, you know. Mm -hmm saying, hang in there, baby, you can do it, uh, you, you know, just all kinds of nice little tidbits, give you that encouragement to, to you know, really hang in there because you'd be so sore, your hands and all from holding the welding guns, and you feel like, well, this is it, I'm not coming in here anymore, you know, you're giving up the ship. That's the kind of thing that happens to any new welder, right? Right, I take it. right. Or either, you can be an old welder. <laughs> and start on a new job, and you'll get sore because it's the different guns. You know, you have to break certain guns and weld different places. And uh, when they give you that encouragement, it really does something for your ego. You know, it gives you that lift, and you say, "Well, heck, if they can do it, I can do it." You know. Are you pretty much in both cases? Are you pretty much the first women doing the jobs that you're doing in in your plants? Yes, I am. I'm not. You're not. No, because um, it goes back a short time, though. About doesn't three it? years, they have women who were there before me. But I'm the first woman who's hung power steering pumps, and I'm the first woman that's used those three big guns. So I'm very proud of that. What made it possible for for them to hire you? Uh, since something new, something must have happened. Is this because of the change in legislation? Well, in my case. It was largely, and this is what I tell other people, it was largely my background. I don't feel as if I am a token female. As a few men in the teaching profession, when I left, called me. The men in the mill could accept me working in the mill, but the men that I taught with could not accept a woman stepping out of her character of being a teacher and in a classroom with the children. And I don't know, I just felt very accepted. I felt no problem at all. I felt that it was because of my background and because I took a test that was compared with male engineers and I ranked as high as I did in the science and math areas which were important, I think this enabled me. The job was there, the air pollution was there, and I will go on for my PhD and complete the requirements for it. You plan to go on for your PhD while working in the mill? Oh, yes. I, I find that there's so much to life and it's all there. You just have to reach out and the steel mill to me is one of them. I don't plan on ever leaving the mill. As one guy put it, I've worked here 36 years and I still don't know all there is to know about this job. So there's a lot there for me to find out. Right. Well, I feel the same way. I really want to stay there. Um, it, you have so many things you can do. There's bowling and, you know, with the men. Uh, like I read in the paper, they only have the men's league. They don't have a league for the women yet. I don't know whether the women don't want to participate <laughs> or, or what, you know, believe it. You want to integrate well, I'm, I'm going to do it this September. I'm going to get into the bowling league. What about I'm the going into flying, excuse me. No, go ahead. I'm going into flying starting tomorrow. You know you're in when yeah. they say, 
You want to stop and have a beer with me after work? Oh, that's <laughs> always. That's <laughs> traditional. <laughs> traditional. They've been doing it for 85,000 years. They, they'll take you if you start today. They'll take you after work to get the beer. No, and that's it, when you feel that you're If you're a guy's going to sit on a bar stool next to you and talk shop, you're in. You're in. <laughs> you're one of the guys. Right. You're one of the guys. What about your training? Did you have any training for the specific jobs you have, or did that all come after you started? Mine came after I started. I had no training in welding at all. None. And none of your school background equipped you no. for this? It was no. all done by the company? By the company. Right. What about you? Well, my background, as far as my schooling went, sciences, you can apply anywhere, the physics and chemistry. And I was amazed how much in the mill. But the training was in the mill. They, it's a terrific program. It's one year long where I tour every department of the mill. And now that I am in air pollution, I spend a lot of time in the coke ovens and the open hearth and the blooming mill. And my training there is by, I regard, experts. They're experts in their area and they are foremen. They're willing to spend as much time with you as you need, and not only that, they're willing to let you more or less throw a hand in. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you all very much for helping us get a better view of what the American working woman is like today.